All right, folks, today's Tuesday, April 16th, 2019. And uh, I figure I'd make me a little video to document some of these problems I'm having with the uh, brakes. So I've been driving this car. I pro I've probably put three to five miles on the car. Been going in and out the driveway, up and down the street, um, trying to get the brakes working. And they just, I don't know if I'm expecting too much out of disc brakes on a classic car or something's wrong um, because uh, you got a, I got a spongy pedal. Uh, the pedal goes all the way nearly to the floor. If you press hard enough, it will go to the floor, um, which new cars do that too. If you notice, if you sit and press on the pedal hard, it does eventually go to the floor. Um, but... I'm just not stopping on the dime. I mean, at 45 miles an hour down the street, 35 miles an hour, it, it takes a significant distance to, uh, to come to a stop. Um, now, I had the same issue on a 62 that I had. I had a 62 with, uh, it had a front disc kit, and then I had a, a Lincoln uh, Versailles disc brake rear end. And uh, I ended up selling the car before I actually got to address the problem. And I, the car sold really quick. Um, so I'm familiar with this problem, but I've never fixed it. Now I've done a lot of uh, Googling and stuff, and, and Google is like, has a lot of good information, but uh, I, I think it's like WebMD. Like uh, you look up symptoms for a sore throat, and by the time you're done searching, you think you have cancer. So you Google, you go around in circles. So. Um, I did make a topic on ChevyTalk.com. I don't know if anybody's on that website. Um, and it seems like this is a very common problem with these classic cars or trucks or anything. The upgrading disc brakes is the spongy brake. So what I'm going to do today is, I mean, I've, I bled this thing probably five times. I, master, I, uh, I bench bled the master cylinder once. I syringe bled it several times. Uh, I've bled all four wheels probably five times. Uh, using you know somebody pumping the pedal and me cracking the bleeder screw bleeder line or whatever probably done that five times probably went through a gallon of fluid um, and still got soft pedal um, on the uh, on the brake pedal itself there's two holes uh, a high and a low one I'll show you here uh, put the flash on so we can see what's going on Let me see. So on the brake pedal itself, there's two holes where the where the push rod can go. Um, now, from what I read, it's supposed to go in the bottom hole. The bottom hole, it, it originally had two holes, but the bottom hole was too small for the pin. So I had to drill that out. Uh, in the top hole, it seems like the push rod is more squared up to the uh, booster, but the bottom hole actually gives a better pedal. So the car is off naturally right now, and you can see how much it has play before it engages. Now, I'm putting a fair amount of pressure on there, and that's about bottomed out. Now that's ideal if the car was on. Um, but for some reason, when the car is on, it, it, it it just totally loses pressure and it just goes all the way to the floor. Um, so you can see I have the push rod threaded out almost all the way. Um, it's in there by probably about three threads, four threads on the front end. I'm not sure, can't tell. Um, I don't want to thread it out anymore. I don't think that's the problem. I think I, I think the problem is still has air in the line. Let me crawl out of here. But I don't see how if I bled this thing so many times. So what I'm going to do this afternoon is uh, I'm going to, every time I've bled this car, I've done it on the floor, even though I have a lift. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to put it up on the lift. I'm going to get all four wheels off, uh, take the skirts off, get the wheels off so I can have easy access, see what's going on. I'm going to take the master cylinder off again. I'm going to bench bleed that. I'm going to take the booster off. Check the way it mates to the master cylinder, make sure all is good, which it should be. It came in a kit, but you know, who knows? Uh, 
So basically, I'm going to bust this thing wide open again and start all over. Um, and I'm going to have to bleed all over again. But I think getting it on the lift might give me a better point of view, see what's going on. And uh, man, it's like the bleeder screws are pretty hard to get to, especially on the front. Uh, the spindle's right there in the way. I did buy some rubber hose, 316 rubber hose, uh, so it doesn't make quite a mess. Yesterday I did get the emergency brake adjusted. Now the e-brake, I'm not sure if this is considered an emergency brake or it's considered a parking brake. Because on new cars, you're driving down the street 45 miles an hour, you pull the emergency brake, it's going to bring you to a stop. On this car, it slows you down, barely. But it doesn't bring you to a stop. Um, now, with the car in park, you engage the parking brake or emergency brake, and then you put it in drive, it does have enough power, the brake, to keep it from moving at idle. Um, you can even give it gas and it'll, it'll hold it, but it won't bring the car to a stop. I don't know if I'm expecting too much out of the emergency brake to bring the car to a stop while going 45 miles an hour, or if that's just the way it's built. Uh, but it has these Eldorado, I think they're Eldorado style rear calipers. And I adjusted that yesterday. I adjusted the intermediate cable to give it a, a little more slack. And I have a new old stock pedal assembly. So from the, from the pedal, from the pedal pad, all the way to the back of the car is all brand new. So there's no reason why this thing shouldn't be operating um, the way it is. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna put it on the rack, get the wheels off, get it up in the air, see what's going on. But uh, just maybe somebody out there can give me some pointers on what am I doing wrong here. Um, so stay tuned for part two. All right, here's part two of this video. That took about 20 minutes to get this thing off. Now there was a little bit of moisture on the mat on the booster. I don't know if it's bypassing the master, but I'm noticing right off the bat that the push rod is pretty recessed in. It's recessed probably a quarter inch. So I'm going to adjust that out, and that might be my problem. But I'm not I'm not sure about the dampness. I don't know where that came from. So I'm going to put that back. I'm going to adjust this back out. Put it back together. See what we got. All right, here's part two of this break video. Uh, so yesterday, I didn't really record much with what I was doing, but I, uh, I adjust the push rod on the uh, vacuum booster. I'll show a video of that once I pull this off. I adjust, I pulled the, the master off, I pulled the brake booster off, I disconnect the, the push rod from the pedal, pulled the brake booster off to get a good look at it. And I had um, brake fluid in between the master and the booster, vacuum booster, which isn't good. Um, so I went ahead and I adjusted out the push rod a hair. Um, it was pretty recessed in. I, I want to say it was probably about three-eighths of an inch recessed in. So I adjusted it out a hair, put the, put the booster back on, put the master back on, or bench bled the master, put it back on, hooked up my lines, bled, bled all four wheels with the wheels off. I probably we probably pumped the pedal about 10 times each wheel starting with the rear um, put it all back together took it down the road the pedal was a little bit more responsive but still uh, had erratic uh, behavior like uh, pump it twice it would be hard and then the next pump you know you, you pump it twice it would get hard you let the car idle 10 feet forward you pump it again the pedal goes to the floor uh, did that a few times up and down the street, pulled it back in, and uh, looked up under here, and I don't know if the camera's going to pick this up, but I got brake fluid running down the uh, booster between the master. So it was that, just like I suspected, it's not the way it's supposed to be. So I have a direct, I have a leak right on the master cylinder, which is leaking fluid and in turn sucking air. Now, when I bench bled the master yesterday, um, I probably pushed that rod in with the screwdriver probably a hundred times over the course of five minutes, and it never got all the air out. Um, at towards the end there, it was getting really fine air bubbles like foam. I should have videoed it. Um, it's kind of like basically like you spit in the in the reservoir, foamy bubbles, and I'm imagining that that's because of the push rod was leaking. So it's not a big leak, it's a very small leak, 
but none the, nonetheless it's a leak directly on the master cylinder and I'm guessing I'm assuming that's the cause of my problems so I got me a new master cylinder today from Napa this is a off a 72 Corvette it's a part number five five three one oh nine I believe 72 Corvette the same exact thing made in the same exact place not too thrilled it was forty eight dollars so I'm gonna give it a shot I noticed right away that the the bore is more centered than the one that's on the car I'll show you once I pull it off uh, Um, so we're gonna pull it off real quick slap it back on hook up the lines get it on the lift bleed it again Hopefully our problems are solved. Uh, we'll see. I'm not I Don't know what's gonna happen at this point. Uh, I hope it fixes it, but I wouldn't be surprised if it doesn't I, I, I'm really disappointed in these in this uh, booster and master setup um, If this doesn't fix the problem, I'm gonna I'm gonna upgrade and do something better Hopefully it fixes the problem though. I mean I Talk to people, they run this setup all the time, they don't have problems. I've talked to, talked to people and they say they do have problems right out the box. So I guess it's hit or miss like anything else. So let me get to work here. I'm going to crack these lines open, get this thing off, and I'll bring you back, show you the difference between the push rod on the master. All right, well, it looks like we hit another brick wall with this thing because this uh, master cylinder, although it looks identical, it's not because it has a deep bore in it. And this one's a shallow. So I have no push rod adapter or whatever. So I don't know, and the place is closed. So it's gonna be on hold till tomorrow, I guess. Another bump in the road, but if you look at this push rod, or this uh, piston, and you can tell that it's in there crooked, and I think that's the cause of my problems. Whereas this one is a little more squared up, but I don't know even with a with a push rod adapter or whatever if that would even mate up to the power booster or not. So I'm probably just going to return this crap and. Uh, start from scratch, but at least I got it off the car for today, so stay tuned.